okay? Being a pop star, you're very well known in the East. Western, Western audiences are just getting to know you. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into film? I started out in Taiwan. I learned Mandarin there and then I became a singer there. And then a few years after that, I went back to Hong Kong and then signed up with a local Hong Kong record company and then became a pop singer in Hong Kong. Uh, one of my friends who was a director, he was shooting a volleyball movie and he really needed some, he really needed actors who can play volleyball for real. And I used to be a volleyball, uh, on the volleyball team in high school. So I told him about it and he's like, that's good, maybe you can come on to my, be my cast. So I, from his cast, I, I met a lot of people. A lot of people went to work on that cast because of the love of it. And um, that got me, that really got me into it. I love Dream Home. But also think it, it's it's being fairly unique. It's tricky to categorize. It blends social commentary with an engaging slasher tale, and uh, it has there's a lot of dark humor in it. And could you tell us what it's what it's about? I would say it's a story about uh, a woman who would do anything that takes her to achieve whatever she wants. The whole story started out that she's a very vulnerable woman and she has a very tough life and that she 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 lives in Hong Kong and Hong Kong has a major housing problem and that everybody who lives in Hong Kong or maybe even people around the world would relate to this issue and um, and that how a person could flip when when she works so hard into getting something and she doesn't get it and she would just go crazy and Mm -hmm. I thought your portrayal of Cheng Lusheng was spot on, and despite her dark side, I couldn't help but feel that I wanted to protect her and look after her. What drew you to the role of Cheng? Is she someone you could somehow relate to? Well then, I think I can relate to the macho and um, the, all the strength and um, all the violence to it, because um, in real life, mm -hmm. I'm I'm sort of violent that way. Okay. Yes. If you um, if you look up on my performance on stage, um, when I'm singing, um, I like to get I like to go mad. Very dynamic. A lot of action. A lot of, a lot action, of energy. And my music allows me to run around like a mad dog on stage, and I, I enjoy that. And I was really really glad that a role like this came along because it's like, oh good, you know, there's a good chance to show my scenes. Not only are you the lead actor in Dream Home, but you're also a producer on it. Um, and as you are scarily good in the role of Sheng, I was wondering, was the role written with you and your strengths in mind, or was it something that you helped shape and contributed to? Um, I think the character was pretty much there on the script, and I just, um, I think I only improvised. I shaped the character a little bit, but um, it was pretty much set in the script. As, as you had these dual roles on Dream Home, I was wondering, w which of the roles did you prefer more? The, being a producer or being in front of the camera as an actor? Well, I like to be in front of the camera. I like to, I like to perform. But it's also a lot of fun, and it actually it helps with the acting if you get involved in the very beginning of this project because you would be totally on the same page with the director and it saves so much time for the director and it saves a lot of time for me and you would tend to be able to find the character so much clearer because you I get to work with the art director and I get to work with the director and sometimes I get to um, input give some input for the script which really just, it just brings a person to life so easily. Dream Home is, is, it's very engaging and I think it will appeal to an international audience. Is that something that drew you to the project initially or was it a very happy coincidence? Uh, first of all, we really loved the story and we, right the minute the director told us about it, we already thought that it would be, it should be able to communicate with the international audience. 
it's because housing problem is a very it's a very common problem with a lot of big cities and even with a lot of places in the world now. And I think I think a lot of people can they relate? Yeah, I think they very can. much so. Yeah. Talking about Eastern filmmaking, it's a bit of an exotic and mysterious animal to me. So I'm curious, what was it like making Dream Home? It was a very fun, very fun um, experience because it was a lot of them, a lot, a lot of our crew are really good friends of ours. Um, before we shot this movie, we we were friends for me, for many years, and I remember we always have big meetings. In a small room, with a lot of guys, DOP, CG, special effects, makeup, art director, uh, the gaffer, and the director, and everybody. It's sort of like a jamming session. We would um, go along with the script, and then everybody would raise hands when a problem occurs. Like, okay, which, uh, who would, which department would make this? Look real. Who can help? And people would raise hands like, "Oh, maybe my department does would do a better job than your department." And then we they would argue, and it's like, "Okay, all right, then all three of your department will do it, and we'll do it, and we'll have a nice storyboard all set out, and everybody just it's a it's a very nice environment, and it was a really nice experience, and I'm sure, I'm pretty sure, this experience um, has never occurred. In Hong Kong film industry, okay. they don't work that way. Only we do. Given that Dream Home has an international appeal, do you think that the gap in the differences between Western and Eastern audiences sh is shrinking? Oh no, I think I think the world is getting smaller. I think that because of all the media and all the different media platforms and everything, a lot of um, audience from different part of the world can. We can see, we can learn a lot more about different cultures and different people, and because of films, I think film is a very, it's it's a, it's a very contributing medium. That actually, I think it's it's a cultural exchange by itself if you sure. watch a film from a different country, and I think, I think it's definitely getting smaller. I think it's the boundaries are. I think there are no no more boundaries. How much, if any, of a role did the internet play in spreading the word about Dream Home? Yeah, internet has actually did um, a huge, more than half, um, the promotion for us. It had definitely spread the word for us, and while well, we have initiated some. With, um, Word. We have spread some sort of word out there in the internet, and a lot of them has been spread around, and that's why the film has been around. Okay. I think it would never happen if there was no internet. I don't think we can even come here to London to distribute the film. I know it's early days, and uh, Dream Home is barely out of the stars' gate, but has there been any talk of a sequel? I can't wait to we'll, uh, visit the world of Cheng again. Disappointed. Yeah. Why? I just thought. Why did you want to see it? Yeah, very much so. I think the the way your character unfolds, it's almost like you're seeing you seen something created. You actually seen the whole film. You, you're not aware of it from the beginning, but you actually see the building blocks, the stepping stones to see how she becomes the way she becomes. So it's kind of like it's almost like the first part. This is who she is now, and then the story can go on from there. I don't. I just felt there was a lot of scope there. That's that's something for me to think about. Dream Home was produced by 852 Films, and as one of the heads of the company, I was wondering if you could tell us what 852 Films has in the pipeline for us next. 852 Films is, um, we have produced a second film and we're doing a third one. Second one is, um, it's another psycho killer, but this time it's a guy. And um, it's a different cycle. It's, um, it's a um, psycho love story yeah it's called revenge and love story and it's going to be released in the theaters next month okay.
I know you're involved in Steven Soderbergh's Contagion with some A-list talent uh, like Gwyneth Paltrow, Matt Damon, Marion Coulthard, uh, Kate Winslet, Jude Law, and the list goes on that I'm looking at here. But um, what else are you up to? I'm busy with um, shooting um, my recent movie. It's called A Courier. It's um, directed by director Hany Abusad and um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is attached to it and um, Mickey Worth is also attached to it. Ah, does, does that mean we won't see you in smaller independent films anymore? No way, I'll do, I'll still do anything that moves me. That won't change about me. Josie, you've worked with some incredibly talented people, and um, while I was looking through your, your IMDb listing, one name jumped out at me, and, and that was J.C. Chan, Jackie Chan's son. What, what was it like working with him? J.C.? J.C. is formerly my brother now. Really? <laughs> yeah, he, after, after working on The Drummer, um, he's been calling me sister, and I've been calling him brother, and we call ourselves sister and brother on the phone. <laughs> he's a very sweet guy, and he's very down to earth. He's a very um, professional actor and he's actually he's very talented okay. he's very natural as well fascinating to me first day i went on the set he's i think he's way better than i am all right some lighter questions on what is um josie what has been your your favorite film from over the last year or so i would say it's cracked it's, cracked. it's an independent film directed by um jordan Scott. Yeah. good film it's I really enjoyed it. Okay. And your your favorite Eastern film? Yeah, top Eastern film, I would say, except from Dream Home, it oh. is. Um, he did a film. He did a film with um, the directors from Infernal Affairs. Okay. Felix uh, yes. Felix Chong and uh, Alan Mack, and they did it. It's a film. It's a parody of all the of all the. Um, gangster films of Hong Kong, and it's it's really funny. All right, Josie. Um, on the establishing shot, we have something called the one thing, and that's uh, it's mainly advice for for young filmmakers, aspiring filmmakers. And I was wondering if you could tell us one thing that you have learned, or, or that has made a difference to you when making a film. I think um, Johnny Toe inspired me a lot. He taught me to think um, on the other end. Because an actor, as an actor, you would always think about um, being in character and what are the choices of the character and always a thousand why, 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 why. But Johnny Toe teach me to think about um, the perspective of the audience and according to the script. So to go along with the audience emotions and to try to also work that in. Okay. What would the audience think about you or about this, the movie at this point? And that really leads to what you need to do. Okay. So it's adding a third quarter perspective.